We now welcome in Brad Spielberger from Pro Football Focus. Brad, thanks so much for being with us. What's happening? Me. I mean, hey, coming off a big Bears win, that's what it's about. Yeah, and Tyson Bajan obviously was the story this weekend. He's going to continue to be the story at least for a couple of more days, likely getting his second start this weekend in Los Angeles. What impressed you the most about the Bears undrafted rookie? Yeah, I mean, he just stays on schedule, stays in rhythm, takes what the defense gives him, and clearly has a lot of faith and trust in this offensive line, you know, stepping up in the pocket, trusting the pass protectors around him, and also, of course, trusting Deontay Foreman and DJ Moore mm -hmm. and all these guys to get the ball in space, rumble, stumble, get some yards after the catch. It was it was a, a simple offense, but an effective one. Yeah, you brought it up. A lot of Bajan success, I think, can be attributed to the offensive line and their performance. I want to talk about Tevin Jenkins in particular. Since returning from injury, he's allowed just two pressures, zero sacks the line it's been another game of musical chairs this season brad but they're seemingly doing something right that's the most impressive thing about tevin too right he's now played left tackle right tackle left guard right, right guard maybe he'll take some snaps under center in the, in the future uh yeah no it, it really are starting to put together the pieces here of a patchwork darnell Wright clearly couldn't even really use his left shoulder in this game and still did pretty well against max crosby you know with one arm behind his back so to speak so i think you are and when you do eventually hopefully get braxton jones and nate davis back in the fold i really think you have the early makings of a pretty good unit across the board that's something Bears fans certainly like to hear, Brad. Uh, let's switch sides of the ball to talk about Jalen Johnson. Obviously, the star of this game, he gave up two receptions, 16 yards on Sunday, two picks, and a 2.8 passer rating allowed, graded at a team-high 85 per PFF, as you know. Jalen spoke about his contract situation on 670 The Score yesterday. Brad, I want you to take a listen. Things are, I would say, starting to hopefully start to ramp up. We'll see kind of where things go, um, especially in this next week and less than a half. Um, just before the trade day, like, I mean, you never know what can happen beforehand, but just looking forward to see where where things go. If that is my last game, I know I definitely went out with a hell of a bang. And I, of course, show love to the fans, the, the city, and just the whole the stadium in, in general. If I'm back, hey, man, they have back like I never left, but if I'm not, then I definitely know that I, that I went out the right way. Brad, all right. Are you paying him? And if so, what does that number look like? Yeah, I think you have to start having those conversations in earnest, you know, and look into what that deal could look like. I think he falls right into the second tier of corner in the 15 to, let's say, 17 million per year range. You know, Carlton Davis in Tampa Bay, if folks want to look at a, a comparable contract signed for right around three years, 45 million. And I think he falls in that bucket. What I loved about this game was I think you hear a lot about corners. Oh, he doesn't have a lot of ball production, not a lot of pass breakups, not a lot of interceptions for starters. Often that's a good thing because quarterbacks are afraid to throw at him, and that's why he doesn't have a lot of production. But when they do, as you saw in this game, two picks, including a pick six, obviously a sure-handed guy, a guy that can make those splash plays. It's not for a lack of trying. It's because he's so locked down at times that no one wants to throw at him. He has our highest covered grade in the entire NFL now for the season, his top five in reception percentage allowed, uh, top 10 in yards per coverage snap, which looks at you know, the full body of work. I think he's earned a, a contract right in that second tier of you know top players at the position okay but do you want him to stay a bear i do i, I really do I, I think i think he's a very very good player i love terrell smith i love tyreek stevenson Kyler gordon in the slot etc but you're in this phase now you're the second most cap space in the nfl for next season a ton of cash to spend why let a good young player go like if it's an older guy maybe you make an argument why let a good young player leave i, I just think you make it work okay the nfl trade deadline coming up halloween any tricks or treats up ryan pulls his sleeve this year if so what position do you see them targeting? I think if they're going to do something, it's going to be an edge rusher. And I'll just throw a name in there. You know, I think Chase Young from the Washington Commanders mm. is a very, very intriguing option. I think he's both a fit in this defense and also a player that could potentially be available with Washington having two very good first round pick edge defenders heading into free agency in both Chase Young and Montez Sweat. Maybe they're willing to move one of those guys because they might lose one, you know, for nothing in return. If the Bears are going to make a move, obviously, extra first-round pick, extra fourth-round pick in this draft already so they can move some other picks and be good, I think that's the position is get a, a true Tier 1 pass rusher if they can pull it off. Man, that would be something, especially the way this defense has been trending upwards. Uh, let's talk about the division a little bit, Brad. The Vikings, that huge upset over San Francisco last night. The Lions got crushed by the Ravens. What do you make of the NFC North right now? 
Yeah, I think those two teams now are going to be in an interesting battle the rest of the way. Minnesota's next six games, they have Atlanta, New Orleans, I want to say Carolina. They have a lot of winnable games uh, in that next stretch. And look, they have three one-score losses to the Chiefs, Chargers, and Eagles. Like They're not just like they probably weren't as good as their 13-4 and four record last year. I don't think they're as bad as their 3-4 and four record this year. And then for Detroit... Yeah, they got beat down. You know, Jared Goff outside and windy weather and all these things we've kind of heard throughout his entire career. I think it was just a letdown spot. They just did not play well. And Baltimore deserves more credit for playing lights out football. I think Lamar just launched himself into the MVP conversation. So mm. those two teams, I think, are still going to be competing for the top spot. Green Bay and Chicago going through some growing pains. But you mentioned this Bears defense the last three weeks, a top 10 unit in a bunch of different metrics. We saw Minnesota last night have 500 yards on the Niners. They had 220 total yards of offense against Chicago last week. So we'll see if they can battle, maybe try to get their way into the wild card conversation with some good play on both sides of the ball. But both teams are just super young and trying to learn as they go. Is there any chance, this is crazy to bring this up after how well he played last night, but is there any chance that the Vikings trade Kirk Cousins? And if your answer is no, is he going to be the starting quarterback in Minnesota next year? I think that that is going to take all their guys off the table. Kirk Cousins, Daniil Hunter, some other names have been floated out there. I think they're now going to say, hey, let's let's make a push, get Justin Jefferson healthy, and see if we can get back in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, I know it's a boring answer, but but I don't think anyone's leaving now. As for next year, it's very, very interesting, right? I mean, they have to figure out a deal with him. You know, In theory, before the season ends, he's not franchise taggable, which gives him so much leverage. Yeah, he may still want to stay there and re-sign with the team, I'll lean no, but I don't think the door is closed by any means because he might play them out of a draft pick in the first round that could land them their next guy. And he was phenomenal last night. He gets all this flack for primetime Kirk. He was on one last night and deserves a lot of praise this morning. Up in Green Bay, how about that quarterback? What do the what do the Packers do about Jordan Love? Obviously, he started this the year pretty well, solid, and has really struggled as of late. Yeah, the thing with him is he's very efficient still out of a clean pocket. But the first three weeks of the season, he had the lowest pressure rate in the entire NFL and was taking advantage of that. And now defenses have adjusted um, and he really has struggled. He is our least accurate quarterback in the NFL on throws 20 plus yards downfield now. Had an interception to close out that game yesterday. He just really struggles throwing down the field, which is why you're seeing a lot of behind the line of scrimmage and you know a lot of games and tricks going on and you know screen passes, jet motion, all these various things. You know, Packers fans kind of want to blame the coaching staff or whatever. I'm not saying he can't get better, but I think right now Jordan Love is going through some growing pains. I think they could be in the market for a first round pick at quarterback as well, um, especially if their record continues to trend in that wrong direction. That would be something, wouldn't it? Moving on from Aaron Rodgers, get dropped another quarterback after all this hype about Jordan Love. That would really be something. Okay, Brad, I want to get your biggest surprise through the first seven weeks of the NFL season. Any team or just any any team in the any NFL? Any surprise, player, team, coach. What surprised you the most? Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll go back to the Baltimore Ravens. Like, look, I thought yeah. they were going to be a good football team, but I, I didn't think they were going to gel this quickly on offense with new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin. And you see yesterday in that against a good Lions defense that has held a lot of offenses to very little production. They ran the ball effectively. And then the, what they're doing at the intermediate level right now, Lamar Jackson's our highest graded passer, as I mentioned. He's been remarkably accurate. And Todd Munkin has dialed things up, getting free releases for Zay Flowers, getting Mark Andrews in space and getting him open with wheel routes and leaks and delayed things. They just, it's, a, it's a brand new offense. Um, and their defense, I mean, defense coordinator Mike McDonald might be one of the top head coach candidates across the entire NFL. So uh, I guess I'll go with them. I thought they were going to be good. I think they might be great. Okay, and on the flip side of things, how about your biggest disappointment through the first seven weeks? Yeah, that's got to be the Bears' next opponent on Sunday Night oh. Football. That is the, the – which is like, hey, I guess it's a good thing, right? Uh. But that, that is the <laughs> loss <laughs> – that, that is the Los Angeles Chargers. I mean, just too much talent to be this poor on defense, one of the worst units across the NFL. We have seen a Khalil Mack resurgence. I know our old friend the last couple of weeks, but – you know, just busted coverages almost every single week, just weird assignments and, and playing press coverage against speedy receivers and, and just really out of sorts with our old friend Brandon Staley over there. Um, and then Justin Herbert, look, I'm a huge fan. I think he's a great player, um, has really, really not thrown the football well. Actually, is our lowest adjusted completion percentage over the last month.
month of the season. And you see it on tape, missing Keenan Allen on a bunch of throws the last two weeks against Dallas and Kansas City. I just I thought they were going to be a much better team sitting at two and four in that division. You know, good, good luck to you. Brad, what happens if the Bears, Tyson Bajant and the Bears march into L.A. and, and beat Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers? What do you do? At quarterback. Well, first, <laughs> first I think, yeah, there'll be a parade down, you know, uh, Madison Avenue and, <laughs> and, and Chicago will be uh, in hysteria. But I mean, I, I think you still ultimately go back to Justin Fields. He unlocks certain elements of this offense, the ability to throw downfield, which he's been exceptional at so far this season. He's also been great down in the red zone, even in compressed spaces, has been very accurate, very efficient. So I think he is still the guy. Maybe he can take a couple lessons, though, on avoiding sacks and getting the ball out quicker, but I think he is still the guy. But I know it's going to be mayhem if Bajan wins two games in a row. Brad Spielberger of PFF, thank you so much for your time. Great job. Thanks for, jo- thanks for having me.